Charring our food and creating carbon on our iron cookware is a conundrum. We all do it from time to time, sometimes on purpose and sometimes by accident. There's no doubt that creating carbon on our iron cookware creates a lot of problems with our seasoning, but what about the health concerns? Is overcooking and charring our food bad for our health? In this video, I'm going to dig deep and find out where the truth lies. So the science clearly shows that there is certain evidence that cooking meat at high temperatures or on a open grill or a barbecue can create questionable substances and compounds. When overcooking food, we usually see two things. We see burning of the food and the vapors that are released when we burn the food. But what technically happens when we do this? If we're overcooking or starting to char or brown anything, what happens? We're gonna break this into two pieces. This is first we're gonna talk about meat and what happens when we cook meat and then what happens when we cook vegetables. So one of the things that happens when we overcook muscle meat is that we create heterocyclic amines. We're gonna call these HCAs because I'm not gonna say that word again. They're formed when muscle meat is cooked at high temperatures. These compounds are linked to the formation of cancer in animal studies. So HCAs are formed when their muscle meat is cooked at very high temperatures, especially on a grill or a barbecue. The reason that these formations of these compounds are dangerous is that they can damage our DNA and create chronic inflammation. So how do HCAs create DNA mutations? When you eat food containing HCAs, the liver tries to break them down. This process creates reactive metabolites, which can bind directly to DNA. Once bound to the DNA, they can create mutations. Metabolites are small molecules that are made when your body breaks down food or medicines or anything that you have digested. These mutations can create uncontrolled cell growth. That is how cancer starts. HCAs can also create free radicals, which can damage cells and weaken the body's ability to repair its DNA. So over time, this can lead to genetic mutations and increase the risk of cancer. HCAs activate inflammatory pathways, creating an environment where cancer cells can multiply and thrive. HCAs also fuel tumor growth. Once cells become damaged, HCAs may encourage the growth and promotion of precancerous and cancerous cells. Next is polycitric aromatic hydrocarbons, PACs. So fortunately, this has less to do with cooking your food in your iron cookware and more about open flame cooking like a barbecue. So this happens when the fat and the juices from the meat fall onto the flame and then the smoke coats the food. The science around this is a little bit more ironclad and PHAs are known carcinogens. So PHAs are harmful chemicals that form when food like meat and fat or even wood and coal are cooked at high temperatures. They're mostly found in grilled, smoked, and charred foods, but are also found in cigarette smoke, air pollution, and vehicle exhaust. Same as HCAs, PHAs damage DNA and promote chronic inflammation. Next are advanced glycation end products, AGEs. AGEs accumulate in food cooked at high temperatures and may contribute to inflammation and chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. AJEs are harmful compounds formed when proteins or fats combine with sugars in a process called glycation. This happens naturally in the body, but AGEs are also found in foods, especially those cooked at high temperatures like grilling, frying, and roasting. So how do AGEs lead to cancer? First, oxidative stress, as we've already gone over, but we'll cover it again here because it's a little bit different. AGEs trigger the production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, which are unstable molecules that contain oxygen and can easily react with other molecules inside your body. They are a type of free radical, meaning they have unpaired electrons that make them highly reactive. Inflammation, which can damage DNA and increase the risk of mutations, which can lead to cancer. ROS and inflammation weaken the body's ability to repair DNA, making it easier for damaged cells to turn cancerous. Also, the activation of cancer-promoting pathways. AGIs bind to specific receptors in the body, which can activate pathways that promote cell growth survival, and migration, which are the key features of cancer progression. And this one really surprised me. Increased insulin resistance. High AGA levels are linked to insulin resistance and metabolic dysfunction, which can fuel the growth of certain cancers, especially breast, colorectal, and pancreatic cancer. And I guess after all that, there's no surprise that it also promotes tumor growth. 
AGEs increase the production of molecules that help tumors form new blood vessels, allowing cancer cells to get nutrients and spread faster. So all of this doesn't sound good at all, but what's the proof that this is gonna to happen to us? All of the studies that show that any of this is gonna to happen to us are based on animal studies, and that doesn't prove that any of this science is going to apply to humans. But what does that mean? Studies are ongoing, but what happens in a modern research environment is that when we take humans to study the effects of X on humans, and we know from the beginning of that research that this could be or probably quite carcinogenic, exposing the humans to that carcinogen over a long period of time to see if it is carcinogenic isn't moral. We, we aren't allowed to do that by, by law anymore. There was a time in our history where for the sake of science, that you could do these sorts of studies. This doesn't happen anymore. So finding out absolutely conclusively gets harder and harder and harder to prove. So where does this leave us, right? This leaves us with some indicators pointing in a certain direction, but no conclusive, you know, ironclad smoking gun sort of evidence. And a lot of time we hear the, hey, my grandfather ate his gristle until he was 90 and you know, he lived a long and happy life. Awesome, that probably is true. And we know many stories of people that drank to pickle themselves, but lived to 101. There are many examples of people that will live a long and relatively seemingly happy life while not doing what you know, common knowledge would tell you is right or wrong. This is because we are all different. Our DNA and our immune system is different person per person, even within the same families. You know, and it's unfortunate that some people get hit with you know, brutal side of cancers and diseases when seemingly they did nothing to ask for that. And this is how we are as humans. So really what we have to look at is the aggregate of this information and decide for ourselves, is there enough information that helps us make the right choices for us going forward? And what about veggies? Do we get the same effects from charring veggies? Well, the science says no. It, we don't get the same sort of compounds that we get from charring meat, but there still is a concern. Charring certain vegetables, like starchy vegetables, can create a compound called acrylamide. Some studies have shown that this sort of formation of this compound from overcooking starchy vegetables, like burning them, can promote certain cancers. This has been done again in animal studies and hasn't been proven in humans. So understandable why this is a touchy subject. There isn't any smoking gun. People love to cook their food, they wanna cook them and they don't wanna be told any differently. And that is totally understandable. But there is a decent amount of evidence that is proves in a certain direction that overcooking and charring meat and smoking meat can have a carcinogenic outcome, can, can cause cancers. So that is something to decide for yourself if that's right or not. And in no way am I saying that this is something that we should consume less meat or that you as a meat eater should eat less meat. That is not the point of this. This is about how do we cook our food better for ourselves at home. So what do we do to reduce the risks of creating carcinogenic food? So number one is you can simply avoid charring, right? Like, you know, if you do end up blackening or browning anything, cut it off. You know, get rid of that part of meat. Don't consume the charred food. Okay, and this one is phenomenal. This is a solid hack. So it has been shown that marinating your meat for over six hours in a wine or, or beer sort of marinade can reduce the effects of the, the toxic compounds being made by up to 90%. But that's a pretty fantastic result. Number three, flip your meat frequently. Pay attention to what you're cooking. Don't leave it on the heat too long on one side. Increase your antioxidant intake. Eat your veggies. A lot of veggies with your meat is gonna add your antioxidant intake and that could be a balance to you know, any sort of the harmful toxins that you, which you have within any sort of overcooked meat. So through my investigation, what I've learned is that consuming a small amount of charred meat here and there isn't gonna cause any sort of a serious issue. But consuming it consistently on a long-term basis could result in cancer. We've learned that marinating your food could reduce the toxins by up to 90%. That's a huge win and could improve the flavor of your food. We've learned that barbecuing can lead to these sorts of dangerous toxins and that paying really hyper-focused attention to when you're barbecuing to make sure that you're not overcooking your food. And adding the veggies. Get more and more veggies on your plate to 
counteract any sort of negative effects from anything overcooked. So if you're interested in any of the information in this video, I've added all of my links to all of the ways that I've been able to study for this in the description of this video. But what about our cookware? On top of the health concern, overcooking on our iron cookware most certainly is going to lead to carbon buildup and that will lead to problems with our seasoning like peeling and flaking. So this is dry cooking. This is allowing the moisture to, to leave our pan and starting to dry cook our food. And this will start to cook on you know, the fat, the, the sugars, the carbohydrates uh, onto our pan and create a textured surface over top of our seasoning. And just to be super clear, and I've tried to be clear on this many, many videos, carbon buildup is not seasoning. It's carbon buildup. It's the opposite of what you want for a quality seasoning. But if you don't overcook your food and you use something like a chain mail scrubber to maintain your iron continuously on a daily basis, you will be able to maintain your cookware. So to keep your cookware in pristine condition, lower your heat, use marinades, and practice cooking techniques like shallow frying and braising. I hope this was helpful. Any comments, any questions, throw them below. Thank you very much.